still don't get these uh, hot takes on my AJ. I will still fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Maybe not in tomato season or after 11 p.m., but... Your opponent just talks smack on X about you. What's X? Was that like MSN or MySpace or something like that? And none of you are leaving without my homemade pasta sauce either. He's all too skinny. What'd he say? G'day, gang. Welcome back to The Between Bread Show. Let's make an Alexander Volkanovsky. Volk's favorite thing to cook is a tomahawk steak, which is a bone-in ribeye. So we're going to get this thing on the smoker. But before we do, we need to go back in time to yesterday. Volk was born in Wollongong. And I couldn't find anything too interesting about Wollongong and its food, so I thought I'd go a little further back. Volk's father is from Yugoslavia, and his mum is from Greek descent, so I thought we'd make up a couple of sauces. Starting with a Yugoslavian classic, and that is Ivar. So we'll grab three bell peppers or capsicum, and we're charring the skin on a gas burner. I'm out of gas, so I'll take these outside. We'll leave the skin on, and then they are joined by an eggplant. Stab some holes in the eggplant, and then these guys are off to a 150 degree oven until their skins look like this. Leaving to cool and then peeling off the skin and doing your best to remove all of the seeds from the capsicum and getting all that black stuff off. If you don't get it all off, that's fine, but don't leave too much on or it will leave an acrid taste. Then with a blender or stick mixer, we are mixing until we get a consistency that looks like this. After that, We'll add one tablespoon of vinegar, a couple of healthy pinches of kosher salt, a really generous squirt of olive oil, and a little more, five teaspoons of freshly minced garlic, and some freshly ground black pepper. Then this guy's off to the stove top to simmer for 10 minutes. For our Greek component, I thought we'd make a tzatziki. So grab yourself half a large cucumber and a box grater. On the large grating side, Grate your cucumber. Then into a fine mesh sieve, set over a bowl, cover in plastic wrap, and this is going into the fridge overnight to drain. The next day, and I'll try and show you, there, there it is. Got some liquid that has come off of that cucumber. Give it a taste, very good, super food. All right, now we're ready to make our tzatziki. Into a bowl, we'll add one and a half cups of Greek yogurt, our cucumber, the zest and juice of one lemon, three cloves of freshly minced garlic, a healthy squirt of olive oil, a tablespoon and a half of freshly chopped dill, and a couple of pinches of kosher salt. Mix well to combine and taste for seasoning, and then this is off to chill out in the fridge. Now I read in a couple of interviews that Volk's favorite food is pho, but that's a soup, and I didn't really want to make a soup sandwich, so we're sticking with Vietnamese and making it in the style of banh mi. And if we're doing that, we're gonna need to pickle some daikons and carrots. So julienne some daikons and carrots, and you want about three to one ratio between white and orange. Into a large bowl they go, and to that we're gonna add some sugar and salt. Then we'll gently massage these until they let go of some of their liquid. Then into a strainer, we strain them off and give them a rinse in the sink, and then they can chill out while we make our brine. Into our bowl, we'll add half a cup of sugar, a cup and a half of water, and a cup and a half of white vinegar. Mix until your sugar is completely dissolved and then into a jar goes out daikons and carrots and adding in our brining liquid. Pop the lid on and then this is off to the fridge and should be good to use in the next half hour, but I like to leave it overnight. The last bit of prep we need to do is make some Vietnamese mayo. So grab yourself a couple of eggs and separate the yolks from the whites. Then into a container that's not much bigger than the head of your stick mixer. Mix your yolks together until smooth, and then we'll begin slowly streaming in vegetable oil with our stick mixer going. Slowly move the stick mixer from side to side and up and down. There you go, they will start to emulsify. Now once thickened, you can season with salt, and I also like to add a little bit of garlic. With all that done, we are back to our tomahawk, which prior to going on the smoker, we're gonna season generously with some gravel. Barbecue gravel's usually just a makeup of salt, black pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Once all sides are seasoned, we're out to the smoker preheated to 130 degrees Celsius or 270 Fahrenheit. With our temperature probe in, we are smoking until we reach an internal temperature of 53 degrees Celsius 127 Fahrenheit. 
Then while this rests for 10 to 15 minutes, we'll get our barbecue ripping hot. And once it is, we'll get a good sear on both sides. With our sear all done, back inside we come and look at that. That is a good looking piece of beef. Now you may be wondering, hey Jackson, I live in an apartment. Can I still make this sick ass fucking meat too? Yes, of course you can. Just get a boneless ribeye, cook it in the oven at the same temperatures, pull it out at the same time, and then just sear it in a pan. And will it still have that delicious smoky flavor? No. Carving off the bone and carving as usual until we get down to the last little bits and I'm going to dice these up into sandwich sized chunks. The rest goes off to the side for my second lunch. And now it is time for assembly. Getting yourself a Vietnamese roll and opening it up but leaving the hinge on the back. The first thing to come on is our Vietnamese pate. I really enjoy these two brands here. Then our Vietnamese mayo gets added to the crown of the roll. After that, we'll come on with our smoked seared ribeye. Then our ivar, our pickled daikon and carrots, some freshly sliced cucumber, on top of which we'll add our tzatziki, red chili with the seeds in, you gotta leave the seeds in, and then some cilantro or coriander. Do your best to get this thing closed and there you have it. The Alexander Volkanovsky. It is a Vietnamese, Yugoslavian, Greek, Australian masterpiece. It looks very good, but how does it taste? All right, the Alexander Volkanovsky. Let's go. Oh, I forgot. Magic. On me, has to have it. All right. Whoa! So it's really good. One thing though, because you, because we've got Vietnamese, French, Yugoslavian, Greek, Australian, American barbecue. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Mmm. Mmm. The traditional barn me doesn't give you is the tzatziki gives a little bit of a, a respite from the chili. Holy shit, it's good, but it's so, and that meat. Also the two, because what I made was essentially a, a, a an authentic kind of South uh, Vietnamese banh mi. N not with the smoked ribeye, but if you sub that in for, for a different protein, you're, you're pretty much on the money. And then to add to that two wet additions. Oh, another thing I forgot was shallots that was probably what it was missing to offset the the double wet was the crunch of the shot god damn it 